Being a professional mathematician. Naira Chamberlain talks about his career in mathematical modelling. My name is Naira Chamberlain. I am a mathematical modelling consultant. What I do, I work for let's say, a consultancy and I go around the country solving uh, mathematical problems for large engineering firms on complex engineering problems. When I was doing my mathematics degree uh, at Coventry Polytechnic, the module that interested me the most was mathematical modelling. And hence, I went on and did an MSc in industrial mathematical modelling. And then I actually went in to, let's say, the industry, you know, working in the automotive and aerospace industry, doing mathematical modelling. But then uh, but that, that was for, let's say, research and development centres. And then one time I had an opportunity actually to be, let's say, at work as a consultant on a project over in the Netherlands. And I thought that it was more exciting than working as a consultant, a mathematical consultant, henceforth why I joined a, a, a consultancy. And I have been a consultant for almost 10 years now. First and foremost, there are a lot of uh, mathematicians out there working out in the industry who do not call themselves mathematicians. They may call themselves the title in which the work they are doing. But my role is principally mathematician modeling or, or a modeler, but to, to hence absolutely emphasize that's the type of consultant that the client and the customer would would uh, would would have is somebody that will come in as a mathematician to look at the problems from a mathematical perspective. You have to be one a very good communicator. Thing is, if you solve a problem and you cannot communicate it to, let's say, a non-mathematical or non-technical audience, then that solution just remains in your head, and so you haven't really solved the the problem. So one, you have to be a good good communicator. Another thing. Also, you have to be good at programming, you know, learn a programming language and be comfortable learning new programming languages as you go along. The amount of the programming languages that move and are dropped and they have to do something else to solve the problem. So good communication skills and also learn programming languages and be, and be willing to learn new programming languages or, and whatever to solve the problems. I'm a member of the Institute of Mathematics and its application. I'm also a member of the Operational Research Society and I'm also a member of the European Mathematical Society. Principally, the, um, the Institute of Mathematics and its application, it's a very good network to meet other mathematicians working in either similar or dissimilar fields to see what problems they encounter and look at their motivation and enthusiasm. And also, it's good actually to network with your, with your peer, uh, peer group because it's like there's a saying that iron sharp as iron. And when it comes to mathematicians, that is certainly true. Yes, I am a chartered mathematician. And yes, it does matter to me on two reasons. One, because as a consultant, when my company is selling me to a client, they have to show that I'm of a particular mathematical standing and chartered scientist um, status does actually actually shows goes, goes to a great extent to show that. And also when I am um, giving you, uh, let's say, an example, one time, I had was meeting a Australian client, and I explained I was doing a presentation to him, showing a math, to him a mathematical model. The first thing that he actually focused on was that I was a chartered mathematician, and he was and explained that there was no chartered mathematicians actually in Australia. So he thought he was very surprised, but he regarded this as a good thing. So yes, and and also over in, in Europe, when I go over to the continent. I speak to, let's say, engineers, mathematicians there, they, can, they know exactly where you're coming from when you have chartered status. Yes, I'm doing a, um, a part-time PhD. I reckon I'm coming very, very close to, uh, close to the end. My Viva date is coming very, very close, and then we'll see what the examiner says, but I'm getting very, very much close to the uh, end of the PhD. God willing. Really. There has been challenges um, doing a PhD part-time because sometimes doing my work and then I'm doing, doing, doing my PhD and sometimes you're thinking about two mathematical problems at the, at the same time. However, as you go through the process, and I suppose this is true with probably most PhDs, you learn how to adapt. I think one of the important things about a PhD is learning how to adapt to do a, to do a PhD. And for me, one of the things I was doing, especially when I was coming up to doing writing the complex simulations for my, for my PhD, was I was getting up sort of like four o'clock in the morning, spending three hours on my PhD, then going to work, do my work, and then going to bed at sort of like eight o'clock at, at night. And I call that the Nairobi shift, because it's like I was working in Kenya time, getting up at four o'clock in the morning, 
doing my, doing my PhD when, I'm, when my mind's fresh, then going to work, then going to bed at eight o'clock. I mean, there's um, there's been there's been obstacles. There has there, there have been obstacles. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't absolutely say that there hasn't been obstacles. When I was in my formative years and before the time when internet was so much big, there there haven't been let's say that there are not that many black mathematicians. So henceforth, it's not you're not looking you know, when you when you're looking for let's say that inspirational or role modeling. There's not that there's not that type of person out there to, to actually to, to see. And then sometimes, actually, when you're going into a place and you're actually presenting and you're saying, this is how you solve it mathematically, sometimes it's, it's harder to actually to, um, to get that con convinced. And also, if you want, you're going for a, maybe a certain position or a certain job, sometimes you, you do feel sometimes, let's like say, the door is harder to go through. However, my dad gave me a, a very good lesson back in the day. And he said to me that you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. And I stuck with that. And I went for it, and so, and then henceforth, I reached the stage where I'm more or less an established mathematician. And there's been a lot of people, whatever race they are, who's, who have encouraged me on the way. Being a professional mathematician is a very um, exciting, fascinating role. Yes, you you will you will you'll meet challenges, but to 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 work. I've been being a university or an industry and be the one or the team of the person that solved a particular pr a problem. And you're actually standing in front of engineers and you're teaching them engineering or geographers, geography, biologists, biologists, and you're coming from a mathematical point of view. You can't get a much better buzz, which I can't see you can see in any in other career. This recording was created for the project Being a Professional Mathematician, supported by the MSOR Network, the Institute of Mathematics and its Applications and the Universities of Greenwich and Birmingham as part of the National HE STEM programme. It is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike Licence.